Good morning, good morning, family of God. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. You already know what it is. It's Friday, so you know we get into authentic imitationology. This is episode number 97. I can't believe it. We're closing in on 100 episodes of a Friday session on the Morning Devo. We call this authentic imitationology, authentically imitating the most successful person who has ever lived on this whole entire planet, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, from Nazareth. Um, and man, woo, that's an amazing thing, at least to me. Amen. That God will be so faithful to his word over this ministry, over this segment, over these morning devos, and that you will be able um, to come through as well and experience over 90 episodes of Authentic Imitationology. So welcome back to the Morning Devo uh, with your bro, Sam Lopez. Uh, amazing um, that we could get together through technology, through audio, through video, amen, and through these kind of means that we get together in. So thank you, Jesus, for this day. Uh, thank you for your promise. Thank you for fulfilling your word. And thank you for being faithful to your word. Amen. So there's no other explanation of what God has been doing other than his faithfulness in his word, for his word, through his word, because of his word, because of his authority, because of his love, because of his, because of his mercy, because of his power, all of it, he shines his light brightly on his own word to perform exactly what his word will perform. Amen. So I can't take any credit for it. Only thing I can take credit for is just showing up, not knowing what's going to happen, but knowing I could trust in the Lord Jesus, the one who knows everything that's going to happen before and after. Amen. And during authentic imitationology number 97, episode 97. Today, I'm calling this one special needs, special needs. God brought that and put that on my heart. Yesterday, after we had a little encounter in a city um, yesterday, as I was passing by in a gas station, where this man threatened to do me some bodily harm. And at the at the moment, I'm not going to lie, I was shocked. I was like, me? Like, what's going on? Guy rolled down the window and everything. He says, oh, you know, he was going like this. And he says, you know, you got a problem? And all, weird, it's weird stuff. Um, ultimately, I, an afterthought, I think it was a demonic, um, demonic uh, manifestation. You know, I know it sounds spiritual, but listen, there was no other explanation for that. That was just a weird thing. And I was thinking maybe, and God gave me this last night while I was thinking about it. Maybe that person had special needs, right? And so I said, well, I'll pray for that person and we'll do that today. Amen. I already did it in my heart um, after I settled my heart. Uh, God takes special interest in anyone with special needs. Anyone. Doesn't mean that you have to be a born again believer. Doesn't mean that your parents have to be born again. Doesn't mean any God takes special interest in people with special needs. In anyone with special needs. We're going to be coming from Isaiah chapter 46, verse number 16. We're going to read that word, amen, meditate on that word, devote some time in that word uh, so that we can see the power and move of God when it comes to special needs. So I know some people, some parents, amen, some people who have kids with special needs and um, society sees that as a burden, right? A lot of um, medical insurance companies see that as a burden. God sees it as a special interest. Amen. So God takes special interest in anyone with special needs. Isaiah 42, 16. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, or anything along those lines, and if that person is watching or listening right now, um, God bless you, right? The power of God, the peace of God be upon you. Amen. Um, also, that we're going to pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. And maybe we could reconnect with that, that man or that person uh, that uh, had an issue, evidently, with either the glory of God, the power of God, definitely didn't know the person. Um, maybe this person has special needs, driving a pretty decent, nice car, um, and just left out of the gas station, angry. So what happened? Special needs. 
So, Father God, thank you, Lord God, for today. Thank you for protecting me, guiding me, guarding me yesterday, today, and forevermore. Thank you for doing the same for my friends and my family, my wife, our children, our bloodlines, from the very youngest family member to the very oldest. Thank you for your protection, for your health to our bodies, strength to our bones. Thank you for being with us and in us. And thank you, Lord God, for having special interests with those with special needs, that society will call them one thing or another, but you call them into your presence. You call them into your power, into your love, into your grace, into your mercy, that you have special interests in anyone with special needs. I praise you, Lord God, for your love over all of us. And that you, Lord God, are a forgiving God, a holy God, a righteous God, an all-powerful God. Thank you, Lord God, for who you are and what you're doing. I pray, Lord God, specifically for those parents who have children with special needs. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them growth, patience, that you would give them wisdom, understanding, and a community that will be able to help them out in that situation, in that life, in that place where you have them, Lord God. And remind them of your word over their lives as well. That no one is counted out. We are all counted in when it comes to your purpose and plan for our lives. So I speak life concerning all things living. And I speak death to all those demonic influences, people, those demonic influenced uh, entities and spirits that try to distract and come against the power, the love, the mercy, and the word of God over our lives. In Jesus' name, that Lord God, you will continue to conquer those things. And we have no weapon that's formed against us that will prosper. Thank you that I could be here uh, unharmed, um, even though it was threatened yesterday. Thank you for that. And those others yesterday or today or maybe tomorrow that will have some kind of encounter similar, I pray the power of your protection over their lives. I set forth awkward angels, ministry angels, or warring angels. Set forth them, dispatch them right now in the power of the Lord Jesus' name. And that they will annihilate the tactics of the enemy as well. In Jesus' name, we praise by faith. And those who agree, we say amen and amen. Sister Joanne, I see you. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo, my sister, my friend. So help me share this out. 60 seconds. When we come back, we'll get right into Isaiah chapter number 42, verse number 16 on today's Morning Devo. I'll be right back. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go for it. Let's see the Word of God today. Let's read the Word of God. Let's apply the Word of God. Let's acknowledge the Word of God. Let's believe the Word of God today. Amen. And every day, go going forward. If this is your first time on the morning, Diva, welcome. Amen. If you're listening via Cell Radio Network, Soul Winners with a Z dot ORG, thank you so much for coming through. If you're watching via YouTube, thank you so much. If you are live, that's Soul Winners with a Z dot ORG, welcome back to the morning, Devo. Um, streaming on some social media platforms as well. Thank you for coming through. Um, I'm glad to see you here. Amen. So authentic imitationology. This is part of the Morning Devo, part of the Blaze Bible Studies. Amen. Online and on the network. Um, so you know, I, I take special um, care 
to this ministry because God gave it to me. Amen. It's his ministry and he allowed me to steward what he has given me. Amen. So I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity um, to minister to you and to see what the word of God is going to minister to us collectively. Amen. It's his word that has all the authority, all the power. Amen. His word that shines brightly um, through this ministry. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Amen. So let's go for it. Authentic Inventationology. Special needs. Amen. The word of God says in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they not know. They know not. I will lead them in paths. We're talking about blind people. God is saying, I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness into light before them and make uneven places into a plain. These things I have determined to do for them, and I will not leave them forsaken. This is where we as believers get the word that God will never leave us nor forsake us. And this could be literal blindness or spiritual blindness. Literal blindness meaning a person who is blind, who can't see, who always sees darkness. God says he will lead them in paths that they have not known. Spiritually blind people. I was spiritually blind once before. What about you? Could not see my sin. Could not see that I was headed in the wrong direction. Could not see the glory of God. Could not see the Savior. Could not see life. I only was seeing death. But God says he will lead me and you that were in that darkness into paths they have not known. So whether you take it literally or figuratively, uh, physically or spiritually, God is doing a work. Amen. He says he will make darkness into light before them and make even uneven places into a plane. So he would take crooked paths and make them straight according to his word. So he's totally totally interested in the special needs people with special needs anyone with special needs he will be there he will help us he doesn't create us to make us a burden he created us to make us a blessing he created us to show his glory no matter what type of situation you're in god's glory will shine through what is our part to play trust in him trust in him amen and to some, it's easy to trust the Lord. To others, it's difficult. So wherever you find yourself on, on whatever part of the scale you find yourself, you know, if you find yourself trusting God with no problem or you have a hard time trusting God, amen, my prayer is for you and with you that you would do what God has promised, amen, or you would do something and receive the promise of God. Or you would just rely on the word and promise of God's word over your life and over my life. When we come together collectively trusting in God, the God of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of heaven's armies, we won't fail. We won't go wrong because he will never leave us nor forsake us, right? He will make crooked paths straight. This is an amazing thing. Only God could do this. Amen. And he does it well. He doesn't need uh, anyone else's help. He doesn't need anyone else's help when he comes to his word, when it comes to his word, when it comes to his authority. Amen. He allows us to see things like yesterday we saw a, a, a manifestation of a demonic entity working through a person that was full of hatred for me. And I don't know, you know, what that was all about. But in hindsight, uh, I believe God spoke and said that that person has special needs. So we have to pray, right, um, regarding that. At the time, at the moment, um, when you're feeling threatened, when you're feeling that there's going to be harm um, coming your way, uh, you're not thinking that clearly, but thank you, Jesus, for a sound mind and a spirit, not of fear, but a spirit of courage and a sound mind of love. Amen. He gave it all to us by way of his Holy Spirit. So that's Isaiah 42, 16. God takes special interest in anyone with special needs. How about this one? Psalms chapter 82, verse number three. Psalms chapter 82, verse number three. The Bible says, defend the cause of the weak and fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor 
and oppressed. So God takes special need. He even commands us to take care of the weak and fatherless, right? To help those out who need help, especially the baby in the womb. The baby in the womb of the mom has a, a right to live, right? So that, this is why there's a big debate going on in the political realm. It shouldn't be in the church, but in the political realm for sure we see it about abortion, pro-life, pro-abortion, whatever the case may be. God speaks life into all things, makes all things alive when he comes through and speaks his word. We were all created the same way. Unless you're from another planet, we were created the same way. Amen. And we came to this world basically the same through the, our mother's womb. So there's power in life, power in God-given life, power in the conception, life in conception. Amen. Uh, we are to be the voice for those who will need a voice. The fatherless, amen, the weak, and we're supposed to maintain the rights of the poor and oppressed. Defend the cause of the weak, amen. Some people consider people with special needs weak. I consider people with special needs blessed. They don't have the same worry that we so-called normal people have. They don't have, I think they live longer, amen. I could be wrong, but I have to check the stats. I believe um, people with special needs live longer because they have less stress. And they have a lot more help. Um, they are being uh, belonged by God and God's people. And they seem to have a community who really loves them and that they could rely on. I know a business owner that's filled with Holy Spirit God that's on a mission to create a facility for people with special needs that after their caretaker or their parents pass on, they have a place to live. And he's working on that. And he's close to his goal of uh, raising the funds, amen, to get that done. An amazing mission, amen. And he has experienced children with special needs and he knows other fathers and parents with special needs children. So it was placed on his heart, amen. And he's also a caretaker for his own wife as they are both up in age. So that deserves honor and that deserves a mention. That deserves a blessing from the Lord, right? God will bless that because he's doing what the word says. He is defending the cause of the weak and fatherless. He's maintaining the rights of the poor and oppressed by creating a facility that after their caretakers or their parents pass on, they have a place, a community to stay, to live, to thrive and to grow old. Amen. With caring communities. So that's an amazing mission. How about this one? Got another one for you. First Corinthians chapter number one. First Corinthians chapter number one, verses 27 and 29. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things of and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. In other words, you probably heard this before, that when someone is born with special needs, you probably heard this, especially in the medical field. And I'm not down in the medical field. You know, we, we honor doctors and nurses and physicians and people in the medical field that see things before we see it. And they know how to diagnose and they know how to treat things but God comes with the cure right that's all I'm saying and they say well this child with special needs you know they're not going to be able to do this that and the third you've heard it I've heard it um, they're not going to be able to walk they're not going to be able to talk they're not going to be able to live past a certain age and they make these medical curse decisions medical curses yeah and God sees otherwise that's why I believe that if you trust God no matter what the situation no matter what they tell you about your child, how your child is going to be, trust God in the situation. Amen. And he will see you through. You know that from experience. Me and my wife know that firsthand experience. When they told my wife, no, you will never have children that will live past a certain amount. They were right in the beginning. So-called right. God allowed us. He, he taught us a lesson. That was God teaching us a lesson on faith and a lesson on believing in his word, a lesson on life. And then when it came to the time that God's promise was fulfilled, amen, he gave us double the promise, amen. 
And now we know the handiwork of God, the promise of God, waiting on the Lord. We know it all. Amen. And although they would tell us, no, you're never going to have a child that's not going to be without special needs. We have two children um, that the world will call normal. And God says they're blessed. Regardless, even if they have special needs, they're blessed. They're a creation of God. God doesn't make any mistakes. James Nobody, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. I'll see you there. Amen. Good morning, Brother Frank. Sam, bless you and your family. Bless you and your family as well, my bro. Amen. It's good to see you here in the Morning Devo. So, you probably know somebody. I know some people with children with special needs. Amen. I have a, a great uncle with special needs. I, I'm not even sure if he's still alive, but he has special needs. Um, I haven't seen him in a long time. He might be the last of a, of a family line that we have. But man, I see a community, amen, around special needs children. And I see Christ in that. I see God in that. I see the goodness of people's hearts in that. Amen. That they were not leaving anyone out. Especially when God says he'll use the weak to confound the wise. He'll use those who are so-called normal. I mean... He'll show the people who are so-called normal by the lowly things in life that we deem to be the lowly things in life. And God will use that for his glory. Amen. He's interested in anyone, special interest in anyone with special needs. That's the God we serve. That's the Christ we have. Amen. We need to be imitators of that. We need to care like Jesus cared. Right. We need to care like God cares. We need to be a friend to those who are in need. We need to be a help for those who are in need of help. We need to be a community that comes alongside of other people that have these issues in life. Are they less? No, they're not less than us. They are human beings created in the image of the holy, righteous, loving, just God. Amen. And we need to respect that. No one is left behind. No one is counted out according to the kingdom purposes of God for their life. Why these things happen? Well, the fallen world. That's generic. I know it sounds generic and it might even sound not caring. But Genesis chapter 3 shows you why these things happen. Before Genesis chapter 3, before the fall of man, none of that would have been even in existence. Right? It would have been no um, genetic issues, no sin, no disease, no sickness, no death. Before Genesis 3, think about that. Amen. So that tells me that it wasn't God's original intention for all of this that's happening in our lives to happen. Right? Death wasn't supposed to happen. If Adam and Eve would have obeyed God, if Eve, uh, Adam would have stepped up and spoke back to that serpent or told the serpent to leave, um, none of this would have happened. But it happened. Right? So we can't play the blame game like we saw so early on in the scriptures after the fall of man. We can't play that game. But what we could do is trust in the Redeemer, the one who was sent to bring things back to its original purpose, to the original plan of God. The one who says, I'm bringing a new heaven and a new earth. And his promises in his word are all yea and amen. So we know it's going to happen. When? Nobody could tell you when. The time, the place, um, the hour. No one could tell you that. But what we could do is we could rely on the one who said and promised that he was coming back. Special needs, you might know somebody with special needs, amen. Um, God has a special interest in anyone with special needs, so we should be imitators of that too. We should have special interest with anyone with special needs. You know what it says? That is so beautiful to live in the world with people that don't hate each other and getting along with each other and loving everybody. Yes, yes. You know, I felt threatened yesterday um, when that man was going like this to me and he, he was calling me out for whatever reason in his car he was calling me out uh, threatening to you know do some harm but I was really caught off guard I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie because basically we definitely was minding my own business walking by to get into a Wawa and um, all of that happened but when I noticed that this man wasn't right amen um, a sister in Christ that was with us as well and her husband she just said, bless you, have a nice day, and started walking away. And that caused the wrath that was coming out of his mouth to simmer down, and he left. And then afterwards, she had told 
um, her husband and myself that there was a certain kind of fear in us because we looked back. She said, listen, the lesson here is that when you speak peace over someone, move out the way, keep moving, don't turn back. God has the situation under control. And I learned that lesson. I mean, I'm always willing to learn. And the fear that was um, that when we turned back, me and her husband, we just wanted to make sure everybody was going to be safe. Amen. Um, so I don't think it was so much of a fear as as much as it was a concern. But that person definitely had special needs. And we need to be praying for people with special needs. Amen. Sister Joanne says, I go through a lot like that when I'm driving and people putting up their middle finger. I say to myself, I leave it in the hands of God. Yes. Amen. And um, it's unfortunate, but it happens. And we know that people are angry. We know that people are unsaved. We know that people have special needs. Um, but God has special interests with all those people as well. So, so should we. Amen. Um, be mindful of your surroundings. Amen. Use discernment. And don't get into situations where you might have to um, resort to your own effort. But let's rely on God in every single situation um, when it comes to that situation as well. So, I'm out of time. I hope you understand what's going on here. Um, take time today. Read Isaiah chapter 42, the whole chapter. Amen. And tell me what you think. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.